Good evening, everyone. It is... What is it? It is Tuesday, October 5th, and we have lots of headlines taking place in the country for today. Uh, first of all, we have uh, a flash... <laughs> Well, yeah, flash flood warnings in effect and flood warnings in effect and watches in effect for Georgia. Two to eight inches of rain is forecast over there. Uh, thunderstorms with heavy rain forecast for the Georgia area. That's big time stuff. We have severe thunderstorm watches in effect for Arizona, Yuma, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. Heavy damaging winds along with large hail will be the main threats for that part of our country. Then we have have the dense fog advisories, which are taking place in Minnesota. We're going to talk more about that in just a minute, but let's go ahead and skip. We have the winter storm warnings, which are in effect for many cities in Alaska, where 6 to 10 inches of snow is expected to fall. They're actually having two winter storm warnings issued, uh, but they actually are the exact same thing. I don't really know why there are two separate winter storm warnings issued. The timing is exact. The accumulations are exactly the same. Everything's exactly the same. The same. Air quality alerts are in effect for high ozone for the Houston, Texas area and places right around there. And we have the 50 degree temperature differences occurring again in Stanley, Idaho. We're going to start to see those 50 degree temperature differences uh, go down to 40 degrees as precipitation moves into the area later this week. And then once that precipitation changes over to snow at the end of the week, we're going to drop down to 30 degree temperature differences between night and day. Overnight lows dropping into the single digits. Daytime highs will be in the low 40s, slightly higher than 30 degree temperature differences between night and day. And that's an all snow situation despite low or mid 40s. You know, in the Chicago area, low or mid 40s, that would be falling as rain. But when you go to Stanley, Idaho, the air is super dry, generally speaking. Therefore, there is a lot of evaporative cooling that keeps the precipitation as frozen uh, despite the fact the air temperatures are in the 40s. Just quite unbelievable stuff. The most the snow is expected to accumulate over there would be around a half an inch here and a half an inch there. You know, that's over a several day period. So not too much over in Stanley, Idaho. Uh, Much of Idaho, as usual, will be seeing 40 degree temperature differences between night and day. North Dakota, North Dakota, why did we not start off with this? High temperatures, low 90s, 91 degrees, according to one weather app in Bismarck, North Dakota today. Maybe, you know, this weather app is a big time weather app because they claim they're getting their information from the National Weather Service. And if you look on the windy weather app, you'll see that there are several cities in North Dakota as of 4 p.m., which had temperatures 91 degrees, temperatures mid and upper 80s for places in southern Canada. The only other part of this country which is experiencing temperatures in the low 90s is South Texas, where one spot had a temperature of 93 degrees. When you go to areas just south of Arizona to the east of the Gulf of California, you'll see there are are some counties where temperatures are in the low hundreds. Brutal heat will be developing and will intensify over in the Rio Grande Village area, Rio Grande City, and for South Texas, as Falcon Lake Estates, Texas, that's Mike, Texas as well. Temperatures mid-90s for most of the week, but high temperatures going into the upper 90s later in the week, and for Rio Grande Village highs in the low hundreds by the time we get to Chavez and Sunday. We have that heat That heat is moving into the Midwest, and there is no end to the warmth in sight, says expert meteorologist Tom Skilling. Can you believe it? The warmth is moving into the Midwest, and there's no end to the warmth in sight. We're going to see those temperatures go up and up. And the big story over here, what's really unusual this time of the year, is the high dew points. Dew points in the low to mid-60s. You see what's happening with that. It's not producing any heat indices, because it's not really warm enough to produce a heat index unless temperatures would be in the low 90s. But the high dew points is making it impossible for those temperatures to drop. The temperatures are 
trying to drop, but they just can't because the dew points are too high. And that's what's producing the dense fog, I believe, in the Minnesota area, Wisconsin area. That's why you have those dense fog advisories in effect. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some fog in our area, especially as we head later into the week. And, you know, the chances of precipitation technically might be starting tonight or tomorrow morning, but they really go up a little bit on Thursday. But Thursday afternoon is really the time when you have to watch out for those thunderstorms along with Thursday evening. And then we the that's then right afterwards, you know, temperatures low to mid seventies, but right after that, that's when we have that sounds like some type of dome of heat moves into our area. This will go from Texas all the way into the Ohio Valley and it's gonna be warm all over the place and really warm uh, for the next two weeks. Really warm. You'll see those temperatures go 18 degrees above normal up in Canada. I think it's 12 to 16 degrees above normal for our area. We're going to see those high temperatures approach 80 degrees on Shabbos and then Sunday with those strong southwest winds. The humidity, the humidity will be increasing. We have days this week where dew points are expected to hit 65 degrees. Uh, So imagine that because overnight lows are supposed to be in the 40s this time of the year. So so the, these dew points are not really supposed to be happening. A dew point of 65 means it's impossible for the temperatures to drop below 65. Basically, that's basically what it means. We'll have high temperatures about 80 degrees on Shabbos, maybe a little bit warmer. Because we have the the more the, the thing is is that we're starting off the day with such high temperatures that even if with the weak sun, whatever you want to call it, we're still going to end up with temperatures near 80. And then Sunday we. Saw with high temperatures well into the 80s with humidity. That's going to be the day of peak heating. But the unseasonably warm temperatures continue after that. In fact, one of the headlines uh, written in the Tribune says the extraordinary warmth uh, extraordinary warmth uh, will be taking over the area with no end to the warmth in sight. We pointed out yesterday, however, AccuWeather is not focusing on that at all. AccuWeather is focusing on some type of polar vortex that they're expecting to go into the United States, the lower 48 states, in November. That's quite a forecast. That's really a, quite a forecast. And to add to that, temperatures will warm up in December. By mid-December, they say the bitter cold will be over with, but we're going to have a couple of, uh, I don't know where, how they figure this out. That they, some of it's based upon a La Nina, but the La Nina is a little bit weaker this year, they say, than it was last year. And then another polar vortex arrives in March. That's what they say. How do they know? I don't really know, but it seems like a uh, I don't know, that website seems like a pretty reliable website to me, uh, So, but they're not focused on the warmth for now. Uh, January, they, didn't, they were not clear about whether there would be a polar vortex one way or the other, but they were pretty clear that the January thaw, which is rarely felt in the Chicago area but felt almost everywhere else, occurs between January 23rd to 27th, where it just gets mild almost everywhere. That they think won't be happening this year. They think that's going to happen in February. Uh, Chicago doesn't get it anyway, so from the years that I've seen, I've, but St. Louis gets it, Baltimore gets it, uh, these are places you'll notice that, that time of those dates, you'll see those temperatures go up, and you know, that's a very interesting, uh, <laughs> very interesting thing. Why should that happen? Nobody knows as far as I know, uh, but AccuWeather is focused on that, uh, but Tom Skilling's focused on the warm temperatures that we will be getting for the next two weeks with no end to the warmth in sight. And again, it's those dew points which are really doing it. Why do we have such high dew points, uh, unseasonably high dew points? You know, these are not high dew points for the summertime, but, you know, when normal lows are supposed to be in the 40s, these certainly are high dew points. I don't have an answer for that. I don't know where these high dew points are coming from. We're going to have to look into that. We also spoke about a city yesterday, Neshkone, uh, Alaska, which <laughs> there's a full forecast for the city. Uh, the snow, sleet, every day, different types of precipitation for the most part. Until you get to the end of the seven-day forecast cycle, lots of wind as well. But there are no temperatures for the city. No temperatures. There's no temp- the, f- the forecast does not include any temperatures for this city. Why is that? I, I want to know why that is, and uh, I want to 
uh, confirm that I have the city later and do some research on that. Uh, you know, some people might claim that this is a, a marine city out in the frozen ocean. The only problem with that is that those forecasts, the winds for those forecasts are given in nautical miles, not in miles per hour. So this has got to be a city which is really in the United States on land. If not, then not. But uh, And we have to figure out why there are no temperatures. Maybe there's just the, the temperature is always the same in that city. And there's no reason to forecast, you know, there's no reason to forecast temperatures. That's a possibility. Maybe it's a place surrounded by water. And and to tell you the truth, it probably is a place surrounded by water because the precipitation's just nonstop, just nonstop in this area. Um, I doubt I've covered everything. I really do. I doubt I've covered everything. Uh, but uh, we're going to go ahead and call it... <laughs> call it a night for now um i i did look in many cities throughout the world there's nothing really that stands out in my mind but i know i'm forgetting something no question about it uh but thank you for listening i wish everybody a good night and uh enjoy the warm weather if you live here in the midwest and i believe the east coast as well so 